This is the Authentic Dating series brought to you by Ahmad and David. Where we explore what it takes to have a dating life you're excited about. Hi, I'm David. I'm Ahmad. And this is the Authentic Dating series. And today we have a wonderful guest with us, uh, the London dating coach. Wonderful guest. The wonderful guest. (laughs) Yeah, wonderful. Um, uh, Johnny Cassell. Thank you for having me, guys. And yeah, we've sat for a couple of hours talking about all the great things about dating and coaching. But what we're going to go into today is we're going to talk a bit, some of Johnny's story about how he came from being useless with women to be, you know, teaching men all over the world. (laughs) (laughs) Is that true? Diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> um, to being to be teaching men all over the world, um, yeah. you know his skills and his skill set. So that's going to be awesome. And then we're going to go into some other bits and pieces about you know maybe some tips, like five simple tips to really enhance your dating life to take you from like where you are now to maybe you know like David Janjo used to say back in the day, double your dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that book. Uh, <laughs> And then we're going to talk a bit about how, you know, being a dating coach has affected our lives. And then we're going to talk a bit about the dark side. You know, it's going to do some like... Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. You know, the Jedi mind tricks that you can pull and how that, that ruins your life. Well, yeah. no, no, joking. Only, you know, great, how that makes things hard. Great power comes great responsibility. All right, Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, Go on. I know, I was just going to say, yeah. So, Johnny, tell us a bit about your story. Well, I mean, I think anyone working in this space like you guys, you know, your first project is yourself, Mm. right? So that was something that in the early days was apparent to me that I wasn't kind of, I didn't find the confidence that I needed within myself to go and speak to the sort of women that I wanted to speak to. Women, I say girls at the age of like 16, 17, (laughs) right? You weren't approaching the 45-year-olds at that point. (laughs) Less so when the confidence grew. (laughs) But um, yeah, so, you know, I didn't have the confidence in in myself to really be sort of making the the approaches. I lacked strategy, social strategy. I lacked social intuition. Mm. Um, I was caught up in the lad culture, Mm. you know, very early on. And uh, I believe those were my sticking points at the early uh, stages. But then, of course, as you start going deeper into this and you start learning more about your own psychology and the sort of paths we choose to take based on certain events that happen in your life, I traced it as far back as when I was at school. And we're talking about four or five years old. Mm. And something that occurred to me, which is an event that I just parked, was I was was actually physically abused by girls at school. Wow. Wow. Right. So... So much so that, you know, my parents had to come down and, and have a word with the headmaster and this, I mean, you know, it's bruises all over my legs, wow. right? So that was my earliest reference point of women, of inter- well, girls. girls. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was no kiss chase for me, you know, it was, I was running away terrified. And then later on, going through school life, you know, minimal interactions with girls because I was still had this uh, installment in my head. Mm. And I, I remember being late for a class and the consequence of being late for a class is that go and sit on a table who I wasn't familiar with. They were all girls. And of course, you know, something we talk about here is about being more emotional, you know, being in tune with your emotional vocabulary at that young age. You know, you're, you're not, you're not intuitive. You're not mature in that department. Mm. So I took every word they said to heart. Mm. So it effectively compounded to girls don't like me. Girls don't like me. Fuck it. Yeah, you know, and that just became my reality through school life. I went to an all boys school for five years. Again, so interactions were parked for a very long time. I studied motorsport engineering for four years. Mm-hmm. So, which I I do believe that is important to have that engineering mindset. Mm-hmm. I never went into that path, but mm-hmm. definitely still carry the same sort of way of thinking. And um, it was around that period that I would say was was when I became enlightened to actually a new approach to this, right? And I actually started taking a very forward thinking kind of approach in terms of moving myself away from the people that were currently holding my back, the lad culture, yeah. perhaps using it as a vehicle to take me into social environments, but not hiding behind the mask of getting drunk and, you know, to, to, to mask that I was useless with women, you know? I mean, to be honest, I was I was just I was just fed up of the 
I, I pull a pig night, you know, <laughs> there's no other way to do it. You know, like you was, you was not hitting the sort of women that you wanted to hit. You know, you yeah. were not talking to the sort of women you want to hit. It was below par. Yeah. You're scraping the barrel for whoever's was left at the end of a night. <laughs> and I'm not even saying getting anything out of it. Just yeah. like maybe a, a chap. Yeah. Mm. It was poor performance. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. We've all been there. <laughs> We've all been there. It sounds very familiar. It's it's dark race. Race. So those are, those are the early days. And I, like, I think it's important for, for, for us to talk about the early days yeah. for the listeners because, you know, we're all coming into this at different stages of our life. And it's important to understand we've all come from a struggle. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, it's all, it hasn't always been great, you know, and you, you've got to stay uh, on track and, and have a vision. And I, I don't want to get too hippie with this idea of having a vision, but I acknowledge that when I started teaching my friends at the early days and seeing them get results, I didn't have an initial vision. It was just to go out and collect the data, you know, collect um, the responses that you, that the field gives you, but by the doing, what the doing gives you, that's the learning. Mm. And then when my friend turned around and goes, oh, I, got a, I'm, I really like this girl, I'm... I'm going to shack up with her. Mm. I was just thinking, you, what? <laughs> like, we're having so much fun, yeah. you know? But then I thought, wait a minute. Well, what do I want out of this? Yeah. And I started thinking, well, the lifestyle. You know, we talked earlier um, off the recording about how important it is to build a lifestyle where women are just a byproduct of you choosing a great way of living. Yeah. And I, and I envisioned the sort of woman I wanted in my life, right? And... That moment right there how it was so instrumental for just staying focused, right? We, yeah, we talk about setting goals and, you know, everyone goes through school and feels like they're having that pointless lesson of goal setting, right? Yeah. We're having a goal setting class, but that is probably the most important lesson yeah. that, that you can have in life. Totally. Because if it's not a goal, then where are you going? What direction are you going? You've got no path. That's it. You've no direction. Just, Go with the flow, let it happen. That that's there's not, that's not that's no strategy mm. to life, man. Mm. Mm. You know, so that 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 right there was a really big lesson, man. You, you gotta you gotta have a vision. You got and then because what's that? What that is doing? It's bringing what's in the subconscious yeah. into the conscious, totally. and then just park it back into the subconscious again, yeah. and get back in the car and go. And you keep doing it every day. You know, you keep going into that vision every day. And it solidifies more and more exactly how you want it to be and it what does. you're moving towards. Mm. It does. And sometimes you have to stop. And I think it's another thing that we need to be talking about is, is be grateful for where the destination is taking you. Yeah. Right. Mm. It's sometimes, I'm using the analogy of just jumping out the car, but there's sometimes where I've had to literally just jump out the car, look around and think, wow, this has really manifested. Yeah. Like this is ha- as that moment you had like 13 years ago, like you are living that. Yeah. Mm. And there's so much to the mind that we, it's just untapped. So much. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Yeah, I resonate with that We well. We really, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the things that we've done with our lives. And what was clear was like, we've all, you know, we started off probably in the world, especially in this dating stuff, is like, oh, I need to learn some techniques and stuff to do. And more and more realizing, actually, it's just purely about how you think about yourself and you perceive yourself in the world. Right? Yeah. And how you want to create your life out of that. And that's what that's what a lot of people kind of forget when they get involved in kind of the learning about dating is that it's not just about what you're saying, it's about how you're living, it's how about how you're thinking, it's about in your being. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, as we were talking earlier, that you can learn when you get into this and you start reading all the books and you start watching all the videos and you start idolizing certain people who seem to be living a certain way of life that is attractive to you. The Learning what to say is not going to get you fulfilled, mm-hmm. right? It, it's it's going to have, you, you perhaps might have a stimulating interaction or a conversation. But once you, once you go beyond that and that person goes beyond that with you, what is left? Mm. You know, so it is important. Again, we're back to this, this lifestyle. You need to create the lifestyle where these experiences and these situations just seem organic. Yeah. It's just happening. I think that's quite interesting because like that's definitely something that it's not what we saw initially because when we're going out, you're looking at the basics. Okay, how do I start a conversation? Like different situations where I'm starting a conversation. Is it is it a group? Is she by herself? Is it his? And then how am I introducing the idea of taking her on a date or this and that? And it's very tactical based. But yeah. then as time goes on, you start to realize there's a certain vibe to your life that is more important. 
And for those that don't understand that and don't develop that, then afterwards, and, and we mentioned this once before, like afterwards, what do you do when you're in a relationship? Or if, yeah. you, if you want that, right? If you're, but later on, when you're done with all of this, like what, who are you then? And remember that story I told of the guy who, even though he was in a relationship, he was still looking up like interesting stories online mm. to tell his girlfriend because that's what, wow. Yeah. That's what he'd learned. <clears throat> yeah. And, and it's, it's like a, it's like a, a, like a fail safe or a, like a tricycle, never taking the wheels off. That's never, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to learn the techniques. You have to learn. You have to develop that intuition. Mm. That that does need to be part of the process. But again, like it's the lifestyle thing. Like when people were saying, that there was a time where a guy was, like, oh, where do I find a wingman? Where do I think? I go, well, don't. My advice is, don't look for a guy that's into pickup or he's into getting more numbers on his bedpost look for a dude that's just social yeah. or look for a chick that is social yeah right because that's just the foundation you need mm. that foundation of will be the vehicle of you going out to social places mm -hmm. you know yeah and also do other things with that person that you're in that field with so you have stories together yeah you know mm -hmm. not oh this is the the chick or this is the dude that i roll around with to move the chicks with <laughs> oh that's 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 yeah. your history together yeah, yeah. All, okay. your, all your stories are us in the club <laughs> yeah. us in the bar it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's, it's funny because you no know, no we i'd say like we became we knew each other from school but we really became friends like probably about 10 years ago yeah and first of all we we're probably going out quite a lot and then we like we went on holiday as like a group of us yeah, and we started yeah, yeah. just doing more life experience getting really getting into the self-development world in general and mm. doing seminars and things like that and you found that you would be we'd be meeting people and we'd be like oh there's this story and like we'd be like telling this story line by line back and forth and people are completely hooked by a good story mm. like that yeah but it's like because we had a whole life around what we were doing right it wasn't just being in the bar, five you don't get a good week. at telling a story if you haven't lived the story. Mm. Ah, exactly, you know, hundred percent. Well, yeah. it, it does also remind me of that guy, and I think you might have come out of us and him a couple of times where we would go to a bar, and maybe like if it would be me, you, him, and some other guys, we might be standing around chatting for a bit. As soon as he arrives, he's like there for work. He's like, <laughs> he's like he literally would call it leads. He would be like, "Have you got any leads?" And he and he'd there, and, he'd, and, he'd come, and every so often he'd come back to the group and be like, "Yeah, how's it going? You got any good leads?" And he, yeah, oh, man. yeah. And and after a while, we didn't actually want to go out with him because it's not fun. You're not yeah. actually going out with something. You're not actually going out to have fun. Yeah, you're you're going out to work, <laughs> to like get, <laughs> yeah, to get yeah, leads, to get leads, <laughs> yeah, to fill up your sales funnel. I mean, there there is that unconscious element to it. Like yeah. that is obviously what happens. Yeah. But like when you're leading with that thought, mm. you don't even get started. And that was something in the early days. You know, again for the listeners who are perhaps just getting into this or just needing that kick up the ass. One thing I think is really valuable is to not tell yourself you're going out tonight to get pussy. Because yeah. <laughs> you, you ain't even going to talk to anyone. Exactly. You know, so just yeah. say, you're going out to, tonight to meet fun and interesting people. Exactly. You know, yeah. and it just it takes that layer of pressure and just gets you started. Yeah. There's something we used to do with um, students often was you take them into a bar and you go, okay, I don't want you to ask anyone for their phone number tonight. Mm. And they'd be like, what? What do you mean? You're like, I don't want you to ask anyone for their phone number tonight. Tonight, we're just going to talk to people. And they look at you like, you're, what, you're fucking crazy. That's what I'm here for. And you're like, no, no, no. Just going to talk to people. That's the only aim of the evening. Mm. And what would be funny is after like an hour, because they're a lot more relaxed, you'd find there'd be in these situations where they've been talking to a girl for 20, 25 minutes. They're really having fun getting along. And then you go over and be like, yeah, yeah, you should ask her for her number now. Or the girl would be like, oh, it'd be really good to stay in contact. What's your Facebook? Yeah. What's your phone number? And they'd be like, uh, nah, nah, not, not, not dealing with that tonight. <laughs> I've been told I'm not allowed to. Boss, he looks over and you're like, uh -uh. Yeah, boss says no. <laughs> boss says no. Yeah. But what it, what you, like you said, it just relieved all that pressure away from it being about, oh, I need to meet women. I need to get some numbers. And it's just like, oh, you just, you're just having fun in the bar. Or you're just having fun on the street, wherever you may be. Mm. It just relieves a lot of pressure from that kind of heaviness of, oh, I need to meet someone. I need to get some numbers. I need to take someone home tonight. All this mm. kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting. It's like, I mean, I think we've gone well off the track here from the from the intro, which happens all the fucking time. It's, it's, it's an authentic podcast, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Nothing um, scripted thinking, here. But it, but it's interesting, right? Like right from the beginning, where you you know you feel a certain way, you feel like you're lacking and and things aren't right, to a point where you feel like you have a life. We're talking about lifestyle, but you feel yeah. like you have a life and you feel content and happy inside yeah. of who you are, and it's not actually about going out and just 
chasing pussy <laughs> as you put it so eloquently yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. so yeah um, and, and there's and there's a whole there's actually like this is actually one of the core things in fact our first episode is called there's more to dating than just dating and that's one of the reasons is because so many people just focus on the dating mm. and we were saying again in the preamble right like mm. it like for all of us it turned out to be you know a lifestyle for us what we're developing and what our life's about when we leave this planet what's what's it all what's it all been about what have we what have we done yeah so yeah so it's phenomenal actually um just to hear where you started and where you're at today and just what you're doing it's like yeah 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 I was like, we're all on a journey man mm. you know we've all come from so everyone's and everyone's had that pain to joy story you yeah. know but just a lot of people are not prepared to go through enough pain yeah. to get to the joy yeah because it's hard work mm. yeah it is mm. hard work and it's oh, not yeah. and also you know it doesn't take it's not going to take a week or a month oh. you know? and we, we live in a world now where i think a lot of people are like oh how can i go from you know not meeting any women to meeting models in three months mm. and you say well okay you can you could get to that point you could do that mm. but you won't have a lifestyle around you to support keeping those people in your life or you won't necessarily have the confidence and like the deep rooted groundedness in yourself to kind of have the handle those sorts of mm. women right yeah it's mm. but everyone just wants that quick quick fix when actually you know it's all taken us really we're sitting here we've been developing ourselves for what 10 15 years and that's how long it takes to really come into your own power and, and really well, become grounded in the world. I, I would add as well, I mean, in terms of, since we're talking about development, it's like a never-ending game, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get to a point where you realize there's no end to the being of yeah. who you are. And like that only ends when you die. But that's the thing. A lot of people tend to get into this mindset that they need to get somewhere. And when I get, get there, there, I'm going to yeah. be, when I get there, I'm going to be really, really happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, we're all trying to work it out. You know, mm. I mean, like all of us around this table right now, can punch through another ceiling or yeah. several ceilings. Mm. We're all in development. We're all a work in progress. Yeah. It's just that some of us have accumulated more data than mm. you know someone else. Yeah. So that's value. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know everything. Mm. You know, I never say that I know everything. I just know that what I know will help. Yeah. You know. Exactly. That's really good. That's really well point. And also to to say is like when you acknowledge in other people that they're also a work in progress. Mm. as well and you become a bit more forgiving towards yourself mm. and towards other people because it's a really important part it's like we often think oh look at these guys they've they fucking made it right they're at the pinnacle of what they're you know they are oh, they can get any girl they want but actually you don't know their problems mm-hmm. you know and i think we'll probably get into that a bit later on with the <laughs> darker side of things it's yeah. like people don't always see at every level of life it's like you know if you're penniless your problem is that you haven't got any, you can't buy food. But a millionaire, he's still got so, some sort of money problems. Mm. They're just problems you can't like fathom from that sort of level. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could go on about that for a little while. Uh, yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because there's so many examples of that, like in terms of in, like for ourselves or just people we've known, we've met and we've looked up to. But it's kind of like you, something else you said in the preamble about like you, you can't judge or reflect on much of your life and you're only 15 but by the time you've got 20 to 30 years old you've got a lot of experience and you can really look at that mm. and in the same way you look up to people and you start to realize as time goes on that actually the same heroes not necessarily what you thought they were or maybe it's not so rosy mm. at the at the top in that respect and of course there's always another problem another dilemma and i think for me personally one of the things that gives me a lot of peace and ease uh, even if I, I can feel like out of sorts at times is I'm a lot better at dealing with those negative influences or whatever's coming, feeling unsure and going, oh, that's actually okay. I'm used to that. Mm. As opposed to trying to run away from that and trying to feel like I have to constantly be on a happy, happy vibe yeah. or a high vibe or something like that. Yeah. 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 Just managing it in your mind a lot better, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's a huge part of the journey. In fact, taking it back to your to, to your book, um, you, I don't know if you mentioned this already. We've been talking about it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it. We've got a book out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny, you have a book. Uh, mm. um, you mentioned briefly. <laughs> <laughs> Small thing. <don't> <laughs> yeah, but... I, it's nice like that, though. It's, yeah. your equivalent is, that's the equivalent of, like, getting to know someone really well mm. and then realizing you haven't even got their name yet. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've given a lot of value already. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now it's time to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I just want to say yeah because in in your new book, um, what was it called again? 
<laughs> just kidding. Elite, elite seduction. <laughs> elite seduction. Yeah, boom. Yeah. I wanted to hear you say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a better voice here, there. <laughs> so, how, so how do you say it? Elite seduction. Elite seduction. Oh, no, yeah. I say it better, actually. Yeah. <laughs> elite seduction. Yeah, yeah, I think it's elite seduction. <laughs> elite seduction. Yeah. So, um, no, having, having been through your book, and thanks for sending us a copy. Sure, it was really okay. kind of you. Yeah, it was really nice to go through. And actually, been a while since I'd actually read any dating material. I didn't know, mm. you know, I didn't know. actually up to that point, I didn't really know much about how you functioned other than your social media, you know, sure. front. I was going to say facade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The facade. Now your social media, like other than your social media, but um, it was really cool. And, and one of the things I, I, I pointed out today was like, when you look through the chapters, there's actually a lot really about mindset. In, yeah. in, it's, it's not like in one big chunk, but it's throughout. Mm. And you do focus uh, quite a bit on mindset in different ways, not just like, you know, dribbling on about it, but, but in a really, really cool way. And, and how important that is. I think so. Mm. I mean, um, as we said earlier, like, you know, one, one can have all the fancy things to say, mm. but if your mindset isn't in the right place, then, you know, they're going to see that layer at some point, you mm. know, and you've really got to believe you've got to understand your worth. And, you know, a talk that I did recently, um, I opened up the room, it was men and women in the audience. And I said, look, what is the thing that stands in the way of you getting the thing? Mm. Right. And, yeah, you could take that any way you want. Mm. There were several answers, and I anticipate someone would say rejection, right? I go, okay, so what does that actually mean? What is rejection? Well, I go over there. I'm not not accepted, right? Okay, so you're not accepted. Okay, let, let's let's unpack that a little bit more. People that know what they want don't experience rejection because it's not going over to someone to see if they're accepted into their world. They're going mm. over there to see if there's some value alignment going on. Yeah. Mm. Right. So it's more like a discovery session <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with the individual. So when I shared that perspective, it completely flipped the game on the head, you know, to think, yeah. Jesus, like I am, I'm because I don't have enough self worth in myself. I'm going over to see if someone will accept me. Mm. What a load of nonsense, you know? And so, it's all these sort of beliefs that you have to have to get the sort of women that you actually want in your life. Otherwise, you're just sort of plodding along and hoping something will stick. Yeah. You know? So that's a really important mindset principle. And also, the other one I share in there is about, you know, I think the first chapter is about taking responsibility. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, stop being the blamer. Yeah. You know, like, oh, it's, it's because of that. Or it's because of that. Or, you know, we've all gone through shit. There's all been certain events that have happened in our life that we could hold on to and blame for being the reason why we're not significant in such an area of our life. But own it and reframe it and be thankful for it. I mean, I was fucking beaten the shit out of by girls, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I am so thankful for that, yeah. you know? Because it wouldn't have took me on this course of direction that I've gone on, you mm. know? So blessed for having that experience. You know, and you've really got to think like that. You know, I don't care how traumatic it is. You just got to be thankful, mm. you know, because that's brought you to where you are at this point. And that's sometimes it's that experience that kicks you into action. You it know? is. Or that pain that makes you go, I'm going to do something because without that incident, for instance, you may never have really taken any big action in your life. Right? Mm. I know in the book as well, you, in this, I think it's in the same chapter, you talk about an ex-girlfriend of yours mm. who was you'd met like out. I think it was like. Uh, like out in the day and she was beautiful and that, but she'd been sleeping with her ex kind yeah. of the whole time the whole right? duration of two years yeah <laughs> oh, wow. and that, that really you know and, and you could hold on to that and be like women are all terrible mm. fuck women I'm gonna be gay because women are terrible <laughs> you know we can really make a story out of yeah. that but actually you use that you kind of reframe that you know spun that round and was like actually I'm gonna use this as a something to propel me towards my goals and what I want 100% and that, that was Something that I, I held on to is a pure example was something I held on to because I had a lack of experience. I had low self-worth. I didn't think that I would get a girl that I liked in that way in my life again. Mm. So you put up with the nonsense. But if you put up the nonsense, that person lose respect, loses respect for you. Therefore, you lose attraction mm. and you become a walkover and they do such things that they did at that early stage of my life. Obviously, again, we're all a work in progress. I hadn't experienced that in my life yet, yeah. you know? So, I mean... um yeah thankful for it i mean you know i came out of that situation it was a family holiday that we went on and i thought i'll take her on this family holiday and finally you know we'll get we'll experience intimacy together yeah 
And we just didn't. But she experienced it with someone else on the family holiday. Man. Wow. Just like, so I came back off that trip and I was like, got to end this. And I was brave. And I, it's something that I always share. It's like, there is a tremendous amount of energy when you go through a crisis. You know, in this mm. context, we're talking about a breakup. And whenever a guy comes to me, and goes, oh man, I broke up. I go, congratulations, man. Like now you're going to make a huge transforma- transformative journey. Yeah. Right. And um, I've got a client at the moment. I met him when he was, he was a workaholic, yeah. right? He was a, a top guy at uh, Oracle, yeah. right? Flying around the world, doing talks. Then he had a family holiday and it only occurred to him. He hadn't slept with his wife for 12 months. Oh, wow. wow. Right. Wow. And, um, Problems start to occur when they started try, trying to do that on holiday. Yeah. And then she came out and she goes, I, I've been sleeping with someone for the past um, past year. And I was like, you've got to take responsibility for that. You know, mm. you know, your energy went a certain way and you had a deficiency in that area and now it's coming back to haunt you. Yeah. Right. And he was a big overweight guy, you know, mm. just he had a lot of work to be done. But now he sent me a, a recent picture of himself, six pack. Wow. Like complete lifestyle change, new job, lots of more free time, but not really sacrificing much income. So still, you know, has enough resources to enjoy himself. Yeah. Mm. But it takes something like that to shake up the system, mm. you know, mm. that person that is close to you is a mirror to you, yeah. right? She's a person that knows more about you than anyone else. And again, you just got to have be thankful. It's the next chapter. Yeah, mm. and you can move on to something greater. Yeah, if you're if you're willing to create that as well, you know, mm. willingness to put that effort in and use that energy to to create something even better. Yeah. Wow, that's a powerful story. <laughs> mm. No, I'm really, like, I'm yeah, like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we you know, we've, we all go through little stuff like that, you know. Maybe not on that scale, but you know, we all the breakup thing. It's an emotional roller coaster, you know, that we go on. But at the same time, again, like. I think I think the biggest thing is, is is because you're going back into the unknown. Do you know what I mean? The uncertainty, mm. like this lifestyle you built with someone, like you just it feels like you got to start again. But that's exciting. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no. it is. Mm. Totally, I really mm. agree. Oh man, mm. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. How we've just really gone off on a completely different yeah, journey, yeah, yeah. but it's still yeah. been. I feel like we've been great. talking for hours now. Yeah. <laughs> we've covered so many different, so yeah, many different facets different. of... It's one of those episodes you have to... The people could listen to again and again and take something different each time. Yeah, the mm, title's going to have to have like multiple... Multiple titles. <laughs> multiple titles. <laughs> Maybe we should get into the next, next, bit, the next phase of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you did start off... Uh, you know, you, you were going to share some of your five secrets. Yeah. Uh, you did start off by saying some of the stuff in your book, but... Uh, yeah, well, I think, you know, some... I'll, I'll, I'll echo a few of the things that we've already spoke about because I think yeah. they are like key principles to have right and i think you know the first thing we said what well, is is take responsibility of yeah. where you mm. are right now where mm. you are right now it's not your ex-girlfriend's fault it's not your upbringing's fault you know that the harder you've had it the better it is going to be mm. you know i've had, i've experienced working with people that have come from a place where it's been really really good you know from the mm. outside it looks really really good and a place where it's been really really bad yeah you know it's a lot easier for someone that's come from a place where it's been really really bad yeah you know um, so taking responsibility of where you are, fi- finding a-, a vehicle that gets you in social environments. So that'd be right. point number two would be find a vehicle to get you into social environments. hundred percent. Find a vehicle that's going to get you into social environments because if you're not around women, you're not learning about women. Yeah. You know, y- you know, if, if apps, apps are great, they get you access to women, mm. but what version of yourself are you going to put across when you meet that person mm. if you're not familiar with interacting with women? Just uh, so, just to be clear, mm. when you say vehicle, like obviously yeah. we, we understand, but like for the listeners, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I just like mean I just, apps and what else? Yeah, I mean there? so a vehicle that allows you to meet women. So something in your lifestyle that puts you in a position where there are a lot of women. Okay. You know, for a lot of people, the conventional way would be nightlife, mm. yeah. right? But then there might be the gym. Right, yeah. there might be, I don't know, some sort of retreat that you want to go on. There might be a sports club running. It might be a seminars, yoga, seminars, self I mean, development networking work. events. Yeah, networking yeah. events. I mean, it's opportunity is everywhere. Yeah, you know. So those are my first two. It's um, <laughs> forgot them. Responsibility, <laughs> responsibility, vehicle. <laughs> yeah, be, get, finding a social vehicle, and 
remove the outcome the third one remove outcome dependency mm-hmm. right so you've got to just accumulate familiarity collect data yeah right that's why people are you know, become good teachers in this because they have more data points than the average person yeah so they can think quicker. They can have more wit. You know, they someone throws them a left, they parry it and throw them a right. You know, like <laughs> it's like that. That's yeah, what yeah, I feel yeah. like. It's mm, yeah. Um, so th- th- there's there's three ones right there. Style and image. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not something you can skip. Mm. And, and as well, like my friend, because we do styling on, on our on our courses as well. It's don't overlook the fact that that style and image that you want, it also includes that person's physicality. Yeah. So if you're looking at a model, yeah, that guy looks cool. You don't forget that guy works out and looks good underneath. Yeah. yeah? It's not like, oh, buy that shirt and I look like that dude. It don't work no, no, like no. that. <laughs> you have to do the hard work as well. You know? Yeah, that's it. So get it handled. Like, don't have a double standard. Well, oh, yeah, well, she has to be a 10. What about you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you see this a lot with guys. It's like, oh, you know, and I always say to people, it's like, okay, what what do you want in a woman? They're like, oh, you know, I want her to be slim, athletic, nice ass, lovely legs, blah, blah, blah. And you look at the guy and they're like, so when's the last time you went to the gym? When's the last time you <laughs> yeah, worked out? Yeah. When, when's the, like, you want a woman who's intelligent? When's the last time you read a book? Mm. Like, you need to think, am I the things that, this sort of woman is going to be attracted to. And when it comes to style and image, it's like, it's a very much, you know, your style, I always say is like, it kind of, it talks for you before you've spoken. 100%. It says about something about you when you walk into a room, people see your style, how you come across. And if you don't bother to kind of manage that, that equally says something about you as well. Yeah, exactly. We all judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Mm. Like default, Mm. you know, so get it handled. And that, that also spills out to, your online representation of yourself as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, <laughs> I've got bigger problems than someone that's listening to this. If someone Googles my name, you know, I've got a lot of difficult questions to answer. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but people that aren't in this field don't have those problems. So you've got to do the background check on yourself mm-hmm. because that's what chicks do. I, I do that if I ever meet someone. I yeah. want to do the background check. And you got to work. You got to work out this brand that you have. You know what does it say? As we were saying, what does it say about yourself? This, I, I look at it like this. If, imagine like online dating or social media, like a high street. We're walking down that high street, and we're looking through the window, and wherever you stop, what determines if someone that stops and goes in depends if they can see through that window and see does can I associate, yeah. and does this convey value? Yeah. So you've got to use that space to convey your value to your target audience right in an authentic way yeah right and and that's marketing Mm. you know you're essentially becoming a a a better marketer i think the the other thing because we we obviously spoke about quite a lot when it comes to clothing and i don't know for whatever reason maybe because you know your sister works in fashion Mm. i grew up around a lot of females and so like clothing was a bit more of a like kind of highlighted factor for us yeah but a lot of men they don't associate the communication of who they are with what they wear and how they dress and how that actually expresses i think there's a them. i think there's a thing especially within like lad culture when we talked before where mm. it's not seen as being kind of masculine to care about your clothing mm. you know that's that's something that is, is very feminine so a lot of men are just like i don't i'm I, you know i'm a man's man Arr, i'm gonna drink beer yeah. i'm gonna throw in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and go out every day and that's you know that's cool it doesn't matter that's literally what i did today yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you have a manicure wardrobe. <laughs> um, See you in the pub in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, except I didn't go rah rah. I, just, I was like, yeah. Well, we did that before we started recording. Oh yeah, rah rah. <laughs> but you know, but actually, spending that time to um, just learn about clothing mm, is is yeah. a really interesting one. Like, I know I remember in my early twenties being like, okay, I just started buying GQ. GQ mm. magazine comes out every month. Yeah, read it. Finding some reference, you know. Yeah, or yeah. Sim- something simple as is like, okay, you don't know what your style is, but you need to try some things, yeah. wear some different things, mm. make sure things fit, you know, stuff like that that men often really forget about. I think right? it goes back to being vulnerable. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Yeah. Not call up in this idea that you have of yourself. Mm. Because if you stay in that place, 
you've hit the ceiling in terms of your development. Mm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And what you wear is there's a vulnerableness to it, right? Like, you know, you can be laughed at, you can be called out, people can say things to you. Like I've I've had people come up to me and be like, What the fuck are you wearing? Like, you know, yeah. like I've got these these robes that I bought from some friend of mine who travel around the world. And I've gone out to bars in London in these robes and people up to me and going, what the fuck are you wearing? Are you some sort of African prince? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good start. That's you know? And they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, but this is what I, I like found, to wear. So a colleague of mine, he, 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 he really simplified this greatly. And he said that, you know, if you look at nature, the answers are all there. He goes, mm. if you look at birds, for example, mm. you know, the prettiest birds, you know, have the prettiest feathers are the males. Mm to attract the females. Interesting. So if you look at it like that, just kind of get over this idea of like fashion is a woman's thing, you know, yeah. styling is a woman's thing. Like, no, styling is how you turn up, mm. you know, like get it handled. So yeah, definitely, definitely an, uh, a point that can't be overlooked. And it's something that you, you do with your clients yourself, you said as well. You, yeah, you take I them mean, in, you style them. Yeah. I've actually seen some of the pictures on, on your Instagram. Like, cause it, it's like, you know, when we used to coach back in the day, there was a guy who used to do that. Yeah. And it's actually phenomenal. Like <laughs> when a client comes in. We had a, we had, we had a guy that looked like. <laughs> He, he was turned up for an Al-Qaeda recruitment like, <laughs> meeting, right? I, I was sent, sent a picture by my stylist. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We've got to get this guy to the chop shop now, oh, wow. right? And then we turned him around and I'm like, wow. I mean, it was phenomenal. He looked like a rock star. Amazing. You know? yeah, I mean, yeah. um, and it's so rewarding yeah. when you do that for someone. Like, And then he, for him, it's so rewarding as well because he instantly sees the different reception that you get from people. 100%. Like people like... He, he got stopped to ask to be in a fashion blog by this photographer. Wow. Like, never had that in his life. Yeah. Wow. Like, what? <laughs> wow, <laughs> you know? that's amazing. But I think that that kind of leads us on to our next point as well, is be very giving when, you, when you're out socially. Mm. Don't be wanting to take something from. Look, be a value adder. Yeah. You know, I think we all, we, we, both, we all grew up with, you know, sort of books we read, um, you know, leave people better than you found them. Yeah. Right? And that should just be... You know how you live your life. Even if someone is an asshole to you, just go. All right, have a good day. Yeah. You know, don't let someone else's baggage or negativity hinder your social activity. Yeah. You know, just to always be adding value, adding value. It's very difficult to be a prick to someone who is always being nice. Yes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. don't go out being a prick. <laughs> you know, there are pricks out there, and that's yeah. okay. Yeah. That You're not one of them. Point number six. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. We did oh, say yeah. when we were before, <laughs> yeah. but how not to be a dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is a core theme. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, positivity, man, isn't it? And it comes back. Mm. Mm. Adding value to people is something that is really interesting. I remember as a point towards we were teaching, and we would take students into bars and clubs and they, we'd send them off and they'd be approaching girls, this and that. And they'd watch us and they'd be like, but you don't, you guys don't talk to any girls in the club. We're like, we're just having so much fun together and playing around with the people around us. Like, mm. we're not... We That's never... speaking their language. Yeah, That's yeah. the language I'm speaking. You know, yeah. and, and the students would come back and they'd be stand, we'd be there with like a group of girls and we're playing some stupid game or we're, you know, pretending to, you know, forage through the jungle or something like that because we were just... <laughs> We just had fun, yeah. right? And what we did was, was really we added some fun mm. and enjoyment to the people that we came across. And it wasn't, it was no longer about, okay, I need to get a good opener and then I need to transition to some comfort. It was just like, we're going to have fun here. Yeah. And we're going to bring other people into the fun that we create. 100%. I mean, that's something I always advise people. With, like, you know, I'm not a dancer. You know, I, I can do a little bit of salsa. <laughs> I'm, I'm not putting that as like yeah. a, a service. <laughs> but, you know, whenever I had success on the dance floor it was never there's one over there i'm gonna go and talk to i'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know maybe maybe i got that cheap grind but yeah. that was it and it became very awkward when the friend dragged her off for the mm. to go to the toilet or yeah. you know some girl code mm. thing happened yeah, yeah. yeah how we got interacting with women on the dance floor was as we said just have fun because if you're having fun people go out to have fun so they want to be around the fun yes not around, around the guy that's acting like a hyena with the wounded zebras <laughs> standing by the toilet <laughs> right 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 i've actually i was just making me think now just yesterday i was or a couple of days ago I was just traveling on the tube and how often in london on the tube you see a lot of people very stuffy very unsure very mm. stuck mm. and there was this guy like i was with my girlfriend and we were walking towards the escalator and there was a guy kind of waiting for us to go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of waiting for him to go ahead in a sense. I was like, I'll just go. And eventually I was just like, oh, mate, just go. 
but he was so awkward he couldn't even he couldn't even acknowledge he just had to shuffle and 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 what you're saying there is like that's how i like i perceive 90 percent of the population here is they're so like they're in their own world yeah they don't know how to just be human on yeah. in, a, in a human space where everyone's moving around like sometimes it's, it blows people's minds when i go oh would you like to go on the tube like you know like when the door's open yeah and i'm not pushing in front to go yeah, yeah. And but saying, th- like, these yeah. are great examples of what, <laughs> what someone can do every day outside of dating mm. to improve their confidence in social arenas yeah. yeah but see for me at this point it's just like i i, I get in my head I, I chuckle often because i'm like people may think of me as a certain way i don't know what they're thinking but i'm moving around in in a kind of like let's say fair like you know be free like, yeah i don't mind if you bump me i'm cool i'm chill yeah. have another yeah. go yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's fascinating yeah, just to see uh, that as a principle. But it's not, yeah, of course, it's not just about going out. It's mm. in every way of being. Way this, moment, I, yeah. I call it in my book, like the social snowball. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, like, if you you have the opportunity to interact with someone as soon as you leave your house, you know, whether it be someone on the tube or, you know, someone on the bus or, you know, your taxi driver, you know, however, how, whatever way your day starts, there is someone right at the beginning that you can interact with. Yeah. Right. And and just make it happen. Just I mean, I've lost count of how many like free coffees mm. I've got just by making that person feel special, by breaking the pattern that they're expected to experience. Yeah. You know? And that's the way to stimulate someone. Mm. You know? It so, can be as simple sometimes I find as like you know, you go into a shop and you're buying something and I always say to people, How are you? Like mm. I, I yeah. was in, I'm in boots. Like showing that you care. And I'm like, how are you? Hey, how mm. are you? Yeah. And the shock that from that reply is, as it does, it breaks people out their normal pattern of just being ignored and just handing things over. And they're like, oh, I'm okay, thank you. And I'm like, how? And then I, like, how are you? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I've had a good day today. And I really go into some detail, you know, because I'm like, well, I know if I give you more, you're going to get more and I'm going to get more back from you as well. So I'm like, yeah, I've had a good day today. I'm just like finished up on my photography course and I'm going to go out for a few beers afterwards, blah, blah, blah. And then before you know it, you're in a conversation with someone who you would have never spoken to. They've made your day better and you've made theirs better and you walk away. And that's just, you're that's just it. filling yourself and other people with good and, feeling. And, and the more you do it, right, the less resistance you're going to have when you do see someone you like in your ordinary day. Yeah. Because you're just that way inclined. You're just being, like, it's a social muscle. And if yeah. you're not using these social muscles, it might not be there when you need it. Mm. Yeah. You know? The, just to bring you back on that point as well, because there was a story which I really love from your book about, was it was it Lithuania you went to? Yeah. Uh, and you, like, you had, you had a, like, a long weekend. Yeah. And so you didn't know anything in town and you went to like some of the high end shops to just like get a kind of scope of the town. You want to talk a bit about that? I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. This is on this principle, but like a kind of, uh, Mm. I'm going to say like a jacked up version of like, you know, what you can really do with just really being really aware. Yeah. It's, and it it might be, it has inspired like another book that I might write, like to really blow out that in more depth. Mm. So basically, you know, I came up with a strategy where it's free. You just, it takes three days to climb the top of the tree, so to speak, in mm. a different scene, right? A different major city. And because we went, you know, we all, we've all been caught out in the trap where you go somewhere and you you go to all the tourist trap places, mm. you know, pulled in by some promoter for some yeah. Yeah. <laughs> shitty shots and some yeah. bottle of champagne you've never never get to see yeah, at the yeah, bar. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is a really bad crowd. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought, right, how do we get to the top? So I thought, right, well, it's all, again, it's by association, Mm. right? Let's play the association game. So I know through my nightlife experience that high-end brands do brand partnerships with high-end clubs. So the quickest hack to the high-end club without any nonsense getting in would be speaking to the brands and finding out what those clubs are. Yeah. So just did a tour of the city, walked in places like Prada, Burberry, you know, Dior, all these high-end stores, and just asked the same question, hey, where's the best place to go in town? Yeah. Now, they have to have that knowledge because that's part of their, you know, their um, customer service. Yeah. So I accumulated that data and came to the conclusion it was like two places to go. And I always like to stay in a, a decent hotel not the whole, not because of the whole look at me thing. Mm. It's because of the tool it gives you, and the tool is the concierge desk, yes. right? That is access to a lot of things that, as an outsider, you would never get access to. Mm. So I take this data to the, to the desk. I go, 
can you phone this club and tell me how much a table is, right? And you, you know, you've been in London, a table mm. is like 1,500 or two grand, yeah. right? That sounds a lot, but it's not as bad when you split it amongst 10 of you, right? Yeah. It actually is quite beneficial. But I go get, get a guy on the phone and find out how much the, um, the tables are. He goes, all right, well, okay. He's on the phone, he goes, okay, speaking to him now, for, for 150 euros, uh, we can give you a table uh, on the dance floor with some vodka and some champagne. 150 euros for a bottle of vodka and champagne you're not even wow. going to drink all that right it's just yeah. me and my buddy i'm like hmm okay anything more i mean um, it goes okay so for 200 uh you can be have your own table overlooking the whole dance floor right next to the dj and all the alcohol you can drink okay hmm <laughs> what about 250 it's okay for 250 <laughs> we can give you the, the table <laughs> overlooking the whole dance floor Next to the DJ with your own personal security. That's me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, right, put us on there. So we went there. Remember, this is split between two people as well, mm, mm. you know. But the whole point, again, it's not that, oh, look at me. I've got my own table thing. I'm buying access. Mm. I'm buying access to contacts that I'm going to use again and again and again. Yeah. So I've, I, I got the guy's number who had the table next to us. Obviously, he's of some value. Um, the DJ, I got his number, befriended him. And then stay in touch. He told me all the different places to go. And I go, what about Sunday? Anything going down on Sunday? He goes, look, um, it's actually, it's the biggest fashion show of the year tonight. Wow. And it's in this place. And the after party is here. Here's the invite. I go, oh, man, you know, this is cool. Wow. So I took my client there and it was like, it was like a bloody wife auction. It was like, you were seeing all of these amazing models, mm. right? It was just like, man, I mean, who do you want to talk to? Because we're mm. going to get access to all of these people in about an hour and we did we went to the after party it was a very intimate environment sure we got speaking to people in the scene but most importantly we collected a spreadsheet of all of the restauranteurs all of the club owners all of the people in press and pr and luxury and fashion mm. so it was just boom there you go that there in a file when you ever want to go there open it up and go meet someone yeah, and right. build on it and then i just i just follow that template anywhere i go do the same thing in Sweden. I'll do the same thing in LA. Like just three days, just focus thinking like that. Yeah. Always coming from a place where you're adding value as well. Yeah. You know, because you're accumulating people from London, LA, like lift your weight, and you just kind of join people together. So everyone is, everyone is getting something from knowing you. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? And that's the way to just kind of move through that sort of space. Because... Mm -hmm. There's enough blaggers out there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. there's enough blaggers in the nightlife scene, you yeah. know. But if you're if you're differentiating yourself as someone that is a value adder, yeah. you know, and you're the reason why people know each other, then that's how you're gonna be indifferent. Mm. Mm. Oh, no, wow. that's really that's a powerful story. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. that's life changing for people. Yeah. Well, you know, it, right? it gets better because like a year later, we actually threw our own fashion show. Oh wow. Like we and we actually brought in a lot of um the political people yeah. and the fashion scene. Um, flew in some some fashion designers from India because it was 70 years of independence. So mm, flew them in. Wow. The ambassador was involved. There was a bit of funding there. I mean, it was just a, it just snowballed. And then we did it in London as well at the Saatchi Gallery. Wow, wow. <laughs> beautiful. Just bringing yeah. people together, you know, and yeah. helping people do business together as well, mm. you know. But it goes back to what we're saying, create a lifestyle. Mm. Yeah. Create a lifestyle where it's just like, we, what we did, we created a situation where it's normal to be around the models, the fashion designers, all these people that seemed unreachable. Mm. So you just kind of got to think like that. But then it became, it wasn't even about me and the women at the end. Yeah. It was just about how can everyone else benefit from this? Yeah. You know? Mm. And then it was, it just snowballed. My, my, my friend met the Dalai Lama after that every time he went wow. back because he got political connections. Yeah. Mm. You know, so it just took it to a whole new level. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's nuts. I think on, on that point, uh, we'll move on to, uh, you know, wh what's happening next. <laughs> yeah, okay. Where are, you, where are you going next with all of this? Well, I'd like to write more about this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, this kind of like strategic kind of um, how you can use this set of skills in that kind of space and how it can benefit you on a business front because you are effectively becoming a fantastic networker, Yeah. you know. And um, we're, we're moving in the direction of being more holistic when it comes to one's transformation. As yeah. I mentioned earlier, we have a stylist, I've got an interior designer, I've got a therapist on oh, the wow. team. Oh. So, because it's all of these areas need to be addressed yeah. for individuals, you know? I'm meeting guys that I helped, I had a meeting the other day 
with a guy I helped in 2013, right? He was a virgin at the time. He lost his virginity two months after working with me. He, I got him a better job. I say I got him. I give him the belief that he could. So he went and asked for a better job. He got it. And then six years later, he's now earning 165 grand, right? And he's like, okay, look, I've just been focused on this, on my career. Now I want to circle back around and do the whole thing. Yeah. You know, like the whole transformation thing. So we're mm. doing, you know, his fitness. Yeah. He's lost a lot of weight. But he needs to lose more. We're doing his styling. I'm helping him move into London. So setting up that whole pad. Yeah. You know, and then all of the social and the culture stuff that needs to be addressed, you know. So that's kind of what we're kind of doing. What what once started from where we all came from was like mm. the whole pickup thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, trying to move to chicks. Yeah. Your life's life's <laughs> about a lot more than that. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah. know? And and I think that's that's what we gotta address. We got we gotta help the guys out there in, in all the ways that we can. Yeah. Mm. You know? Because it's a life transformation really. You know, you might start off and it's kind of really what we 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 kind of started this podcast was is that you know dating is one area but what people don't always realize is every area of your life is affecting your dating life mm. Mm. so what you really need to do is look at all these different areas like even the relationship you have with your parents is affecting your dating life 100%. you know like your your work life balance is affecting that your fitness you know your health how you eating like your mind like how do you think about yourself and other people it's just like if you you can learn some lines and that might give you some very short success but to have real long-term success you need to deal with these areas of your life you need to like tap in and go okay i need to you know i need to fix these things it can be challenging and and somewhat overwhelming but you just got to focus on one thing at a time mm. you know but the parent thing's a really interesting one isn't it because as we're getting older we see our parents you know getting older in age and i think like if you're getting into a relationship and with in mind that you're starting a family mm how you treat your elders is how you know th that's a lesson to them on how to treat you when you become old yeah you know well, that's so that's really something to kind of look at and consider yeah mm. that's a really strong point mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. i haven't thought about that actually in that way mm. you teach your kids how to treat you by the way you treat your you parents realize, yeah you didn't, mm. you didn't realize that no. <laughs> <laughs> i might have to go away from well, five minutes I mean, right I, now i i say that because uh like in the islamic culture that's like really ingrained yeah, like you're taught in a, from a religious perspective that you should always look after your your parents mm -hmm. because they looked after you. And then that's right. And so it's kind of built into that as a, mm. as a systematic point of view. So it's interesting to hear like, you know, that you're like, oh, this is this is a good value. Because essentially, I mean, all religions have good values yes. and, and yeah. they're good living principles and values. So. At, their, at their core, they're all... <laughs> yeah, and, and I say Islam, but I'm pretty sure like every major religion has the same yeah. thing going on. And yet in Western society, it's a, this is well off the point, but it's very interesting how there is a, a kind of a separation of family yeah so that it's a lot more like people across the world are not necessarily with the same community to support in that and, it, and it also all depends on the sacrifices that family have had to make to maybe cl climb up a class or you know have mm. a give give their children a better upbringing like if their family has been like more like workaholics yeah they may they may have not seen much family time mm. together you know as a sacrifice but i mean it's something that I always strive for like one of my biggest values is someone that's family orientated. Mm. Yeah. And I think like, I'm not, I don't follow any sort of faith myself, but as I said earlier, like I, I really appreciate it. If someone is brought up from a culture and they have that as the foundation. Yeah. That's strong to me. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's important. Yeah. Give some good values. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, there's only one other topic we wanted to cover today, which was uh, about the dark side. The dark side, yeah, dark of course. Side. Yeah, yeah, God, yeah, we teased them with it. We left yeah, it right yeah, to the end. Yeah, I like yeah. that. So the dark, the dark side of, of when you do start to get, you know, really good with women, where you know you can go to bars and clubs mm. and meet people, and and you know just in your your lifestyle, where you start to get to a point where maybe women are coming to meet you, and they're like, oh, I've heard about you. I'd mm. like to. Would you like to take me out for a dinner or a drink? You I've know, heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and like that that kind of darker side of you know the opposite end of the spectrum that a lot of men experience where they you know mm. they struggle with women to where you get to a point where you're very good with women and very good socially in general. Mm. Yeah. Well, over to you. <laughs> I think I think um, the danger people have of just focusing on this, as we said earlier, it's like not having those other areas of your life sorted, like the lifestyle thing, like that's dangerous, mm. right? There's also as well is, and, and as well what we're seeing in, in dating apps is these dating apps are designed 
to keep your attention on them as long as possible, not for your mental health consideration, mm. right? So they can sell, uh, you know, to improve the commercial value of that platform. Mm. So with that in mind, you've got to be disciplined because these things are highly addicting. Yeah. Mm. These people have neuroscientists that help create these platforms to keep the attention on that for as long as possible. It's really sick and twisted. But what a lot of us are doing, we're caught up in chasing that dopamine hit, right? And a dopamine hit is associated, associated with any sort of extreme form of addiction. And if you've got one app on there, yeah, that's, that's okay. Maybe two, three, or four. And you're cycling through all of them and you've got Instagram on the go as well. No. I mean, you can really fuck off a whole day yeah. you know, and do nothing by just chasing validation, yeah. you know? And so that needs to be something we need to be more conscious of. Like, if you're going to use these apps, I mean, you know, there are various great free ones, but I prefer to advise people to use a paid platform because actually it filters out a lot of time wasters, Yeah, perhaps. So you've got like a, a boost in people that are actually authentically looking for yeah. someone to date. And not just looking for that, val- that daily hit. validation. Mm. Yeah. So so just, just, just be mindful of that. I mean, there's... there's I think the iPhone now has a section on there where it tells you how long you've Mm. been on certain apps for. Mm. Or if if your phone doesn't do that, there's a great app called Moments and it'll tell you, you know, how much time you're spending on that. So that can be dark because it can just keep you very still for a long time and it can have you meeting women for the wrong reasons or have you not meeting women because you're just getting that hit from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. there's a really interesting statistic I, I wrote on Instagram, I think it was, where it's like... 60% 60% of people on dating apps have never been on a date mm. from a dating app. Wow. And it's like, that means 60% of the people on there are purely there for what reason? For right? ego. Yeah, validation. Yeah. Right? It's a very it's a very interesting validation tool. You just sit there and go, oh, I match with someone. Someone likes me. And that's what it is, right? It's like, mm-hmm. someone likes me. Oh, mm-hmm. someone else likes me. I'm liked. I'm liked. And it's a cycle of addiction because... Say, for instance, one day no one likes you. You start to feel a bit sad. Mm. You start to mm. feel unworthy. You start to feel a bit worthless. But this is a really dark side, the mental health side of, of dating that that people aren't aware of how much, how gamified all these mm, kind of dating apps have yeah. become. 100%. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, so I'm, I'm glad we raised that point. I think it's, it's very important for people to, to consider. And um, another, another dark thing is people can get quite lost in the nightlife space. Mm. I think I've, I've seen that throughout the years. I've seen people... Um, you know, just not being able to get over their FOMO, their fear of missing out, you know? Yeah. So they're chasing every invite. I mean, I it's it's quite a, um, <laughs> it's quite something here because I, I, I tell people like to get in the habit of saying yes. If they're not not socially inclined, mm. then get in the habit of saying yes to those invites, those Facebook invites that are coming your way, but you're yeah. just ignoring them, right? That does need to be a part of your life if you're struggling with getting out there. Yeah. But you also need to realize that when too much is too much, mm. you know? Understand when to say no, because what happens is, and I've seen this, my friends are like 10 years older than me or 20 years older than me, and they've lived mm. that whole party scene. And as we were talking about earlier off, off, um, you know, off the recording, you gotta start making a conscious decision of what you want the next 10 years to perhaps look like. Are you gonna do another decade in the, the party scene when, you could be starting a family perhaps if that's something you desire and you know your child could experience more of a youthful version of yourself it's not to give into the social pressure it's just to consider what you want the next decade of your life to look like Mm. because i've seen from my friends that are older than me look back and you know they're 40 maybe 50 and they haven't got that Mm. they haven't had that they've just been chasing the party mm. for 10 20 years more than i have wow you know so it's like you got to be more rounded and you got to you got to work out you know when when no mean you know no means no yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't we don't have to always say yes to the party man there's more shit to fucking do than fucking like who cares that dj's playing yeah you know you see him somewhere else next month exactly who cares mm-hmm. there's always something to go to there's always something you're going to miss out on yeah it's actually again you know back to your book about um uh, like thinking like an investor and your time you're yeah like, and it's, it's so true like especially you know, you know when we're young we think like time goes on forever 
but then the older you get you realize time and attention is everything mm. like that's, yeah. the, that's the real value of your life like what, what uh, how you spend your time and where that attention is going is is, is your life yeah yeah so anything or you choose or or choose not to do is going to define the next like the, like i said the next 10 years the next whatever and there's, there's another th- saying that I, I quite like it's like who you are today is the decisions you made five years ago and it's just to I like that. It. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, that is so true. Start mm. sowing the seeds now for the person you want to become. Mm. That is that. So like, there's no, and, I, and with that, there's no quick fix to one's self development in this area. You know, there's the learning uh, part, and then you know, there's the doing. You know, and the real learning is in the doing, and then you'll become from the doing. Mm. Yeah, you know. Um, so, I think those are a few things that you know that um really occurred to me i think again if you get caught up too much in nightlife i think you could perhaps get too uh exposed to the whole drug scene yeah right mm. and again I've, I've seen that and it's it astounds me how bad the coke problem here is in london yeah like it's and people that i i see frequently out you know there's people that can you know they dabble in stuff like that and there's people that have a problem yes you know and it's the when you see that person with that problem like they're just they're just not that person you know yeah you know it's something that has taken over them and they need that thing mm. and it's um you know again it's just something if you're going to be so in deep and uh entangled with nightlife just understand it's a dark alley yeah mm. you know it's an escapism route for most people it is it is you know and i'm not saying that don't go out and enjoy yourself and have a blowout once in a while whatever mm. I'm not condoning the use of drugs, by the way. <laughs> it's not like, oh yeah. <laughs> and if you want to get some stuff, go to yeah. I'm, Again, I'm just saying, be a responsible human being. And yeah. Fucking hell. Mm. It's, it's like, I've seen a few friends of mine actually go down, you know, working through their work, turning to going out, like going out to bars after work multiple times a week, which turns into, you know, doing coke multiple times a week, which turns into them thinking about coke on a on a Thursday night after they've come home from the gym, you know, it becomes, it's yeah. an addiction, right? It really yeah. gets, so you, if you find yourself in this sort of situation where you're around those sorts of people, you need to start being responsible for yourself, right? And being like, okay, I need to remove myself. I, I've got a friend who left a job, mm. but he was just like, the, the people I work with, that's how they are. Yeah. And if I stay in this job, it's going to be very difficult for me to not go down the road they're going down. And he took the responsible decision, just left the job and mm, went yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. And Good I was, man. and he said that, and I was like, so you know, a lot of people go, oh, you should have been, you know, man up, you should be able to say mm. no. But actually, he recognised it was just hard for him, so he just went, I say, I can find another job, and moved on from that. Mm. And and there's help out there. I've got I've got friends that have, um, you know, very successful at what they do, and this this has happened into their life. This substance has come into their life, and it's, you know, it's disrupted them in such ways, and they took the responsible action and, and gone to those meetings, right? Mm. And he goes, well, actually, Johnny, what I'm doing, I'm actually going to an AA meeting, yeah. right? Because that is actually the gateway to get me, to, you know, if I'm drinking alcohol, I'm drinking booze, I associate that with the sniff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so I'm like, right, okay, so it makes sense. So it's just, again, it's about be vulnerable and understand there are people out there that can help you, Yeah, mm. you know? Like, I've got a client, like he, he's... Yeah, he really fucked his life up, man. Oh, wow. Like, and he's constantly relapsing. Oh, you man. know, constantly relapsing. And it's, um, it hurts to see that. And I, yeah. I was on the, again, I was on the phone to a client uh, the other day, called me, and uh, so I just hope I'm going to catch up with him. He was, he returned my missed call. And he was like, um, he just sounded like a monster, man, on the phone. I was like, oh. hey, man, what's, um, what's up? He was like, I'm at work. I was like, what? you mean it's like fucking the exorcist or something it's like watching it (laughs) what is this what's going on have you taken something he goes oh yeah johnny to be honest i have i have i met this girl and uh, you know she she got me on the white and it's like this china white china they call it it's like a it's an opium right so it's heroin effectively yeah wow and i'm like oh shit man like get this fucking girl. I, 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 there was nothing I could do on the phone to you. You can't speak sense to him. But mm. I spoke to his friend who I knew. I said, get him and get that fucking girl out of his life. Yes. Right. And if he hasn't, I'm going to like, I'm going to give it a month. And if he's, if he's still in that situation, I'm going to get on the, the train and I'm going to go over there. He's in Paris and give him a kick up the ass mm. because, you know, part of me feels like I've got responsibility. Yeah. It's yeah. like, wow. you know, be firm yeah. with this guy. Yeah. yeah. So, 
you know, I mean, there's beautiful things that can happen from get, getting great at this, by the way. It's yeah, not all yeah. doom and gloom. I'm just saying, like, be awake to the, the sins that mm. are out there. And, um, you might not even move into the nightlife space yeah. as a place to, to, to give you a resource to, to meet people. Um, but just chasing skirt is not fulfilling, yeah. right? So what happens is this. This is a, what can happen. You end up meeting someone that you like. But your conditioning, because all your condition up to that point has been about being good and attracting women, mm. you have to then consciously recondition yourself to to be exclusive, effectively, yeah. right? If that's the relationship model that you're choosing to to go by. So what I found quite effective is just to consciously be going, I'm done now. I'm done now. Yeah. Like to my peers, to my friends, I'm hearing myself say, I'm done now, I'm done now. Yeah. Right. And then that's it. That's the new conditioning that I now need. Yeah. You know? Mm. So that's just something that I think is quite helpful. If you've gone through this, you've, because it is intensive learning. Yeah. You know, you need to have that sort of switch. Yeah. It's just, I mean, there's so much of it said right in, in the early stages that you need to be automatic. You need to be quick to respond. Mm. But then when you no longer need to be automatic and quick to respond, then how do you turn off that switch? That's it's exactly like, it. You're yeah. with someone and you've, yeah. you see an attractive lady in, in the vicinity yeah. and your mind's going, trigger, yeah. Yeah. do, yeah. act. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you've got to <laughs> kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is that, you know, it is that. And, and anyone coaching this coaches people to behave like that in the early stages, you yeah. know, mm. but there also needs to be an understanding of how to behave when you're with someone, mm. you know, and how to move away from that way of thinking. Cause it becomes like, it's really instinctive, you know, you, yeah. you just, you know, you're out, maybe you, you kind of have a girlfriend and you see a girl on the street. And I really experienced this years ago when we were coaching. It was like, you know, I had a girlfriend and I was kind of coaching a little bit, but I was kind of coming to an <laughs> you're end. Walking and you just left her. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and you'd be like walking along and you see, you see this beautiful girl and you'd look at her and watch her and I in my whole head I'd, I'd have played out what I would do yeah. and I'd be like yeah go over there I'd comment about her bag really 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 nice I'd move in you know talk to about this blah 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 and five minutes later I'd take her phone number and then I'd walk off and you you kind of go ah but I'm not going to do that <laughs> like, no no don't. or because sometimes even your body starts to move towards doing something because it's so automatic mm. or to be honest what used to happen to me a lot and now it's, it's something that I'm aware, a lot more aware of is like you're kind of in a bar and then you get to say, you're going to order a drink and you look to your left and there's like a, a nice girl next to you. And before you've even engaged your brain to think, you've words have left your mouth, yeah. right? You've said something witty and funny and then she's replied and then there's part of your brain kicks in and go, whoa, whoa, whoa how did that even happen? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. It's just automatic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's an interesting one because even to be fair, like even saying to someone right now, you need to be clear about what you want because you don't really know often when you're starting out and you're that's feeling right. insecure and stuff mm. and actually what you want most of all is validation from mm. from the female from the opposite sex you want you want that and then after a while as it going right back to something you said right at the beginning is being able to actually recognize when you've achieved your original goal because yeah. i remember i, I it, it took me i think five more years to realize that i achieved my original goal which was to be able to socialize with anyone and i've been going but the goal posts keep moving yeah. Yeah. yeah you just want to keep getting better and better and whatever just everything just and it's fun and you, just, you don't want the train to stop so so it's a it's a tricky one but it's like it's actually one to be aware of that you can really once you form the habits um if you're not aware it can be a rabbit hole mm. it's actually awareness is key mm. I, I think if you can develop awareness uh conscious awareness and uh something we talk about a lot and, and again goes right back to the beginning of your book is responsibility taking responsibility mm. in your dating life and actually paying attention so if it is the case that you are on automatic and it fucks up a relationship to actually acknowledge that this is now what's going on. Like yeah. you're in that sort of vibe and then allowing a new thing to form. I guess, I mean, from my personal point of view, currently, I don't see a perfect transition. I see yeah. like one has to find their own way. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And also there might be a case, you know, you probably experience this as actually being really honest with your partner and going, mm. this is the paradigm that I'm, I'm used to. I've been used to for so long. And I want to move into this new paradigm of maybe monogamy or a relationship or however it looks for you. But there's a and there's a road I need to walk. Yeah. And like I want to walk this road, yeah. but you have to understand there might be some bumps along the way. And I'm not saying yeah. it might be cheating, it just might be like 
the woman you're with just might need to be understanding about where you've coming from and where, mm. where you want to go to. A hundred percent. A lot of people attach shame to um, communicate on that level. Yeah. You know, mm. shame talking about their desires, their fantasies or their concerns. Therefore, their partner goes and expresses them outside of the relationship. And that's mm. obviously a, a certain direction that will go. Mm. So, I mean, as uncomfortable as something may feel to express, you know, it's only going to enhance your relationship. Mm. Like, and also as well, like you go for like mini breakups in the relationship. I, I'd say like a lot of people misinterpret an argument mm. as, as a breakup, yeah. right? When, when really what you're doing is just, you're talking about what someone is uncomfortable with. Yeah. Mm. Like don't shit the bed and think, Oh God, it's over. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Like, no, this person is going for an emotional breakdown, mm. right? It's just a moment yeah. because they've experienced something they're uncomfortable with, but it's something now that's new on the table to learn about. This was, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, this for me was huge. Like when I, like a couple of years ago uh, when my ex-partner, anytime there was an argument, and I, and I figured out what it was afterwards, but anytime there was an argument, my first thing was like, oh, fuck, this is done. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, it's like almost like in any relationship, it has to be fucking perfect, All plain the sailing the whole it's time. Like, and I think yeah. it's to do with like the very sort of swipe right culture we live in. Mm. You know, yeah. it's like, you, you need to stop, you need to go, okay, one word that you mentioned earlier about weathering the storm, and I think that's just essential in your relationship. You need to learn from each other that you can get certain stuff out on the table and weather that storm together, Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? And if you're fortunate to have, you know, parents that have been together since, you know, many decades, then you would have seen this, Yeah. you mm -hmm. know? So just remind yourself of that. that okay, there are, I am going to be in a doghouse for a little bit. I might have to sleep on the sofa for a little bit, right? <laughs> I, I might have to practice celibacy for a little bit, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you know, we're a team. Yeah. We're a team. And you're committed to that team. Yeah, exactly. The whole fuck it thing, I'll find another one. That's the easy thing to do. Yeah. Mm. That's easy. I feel like okay. I feel like a lot of your principles are like going back to you know dating before way before the internet way before our, our, even our time. Well, we just need to remind us. Actually, how old are you? Yeah. Actually, I didn't. I Thirty. Never, are you yeah. sure? I mean, it's, <laughs> it sound more like seventy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're a team. <laughs> but but what I mean is like because it seems like you know our, old fashioned principles. Yeah, that's mm. what I mean. Yeah, it's like because it seems that way in today's society rather than the you know just quit it. Sort you of just got to go back to yeah. like what you know that works, mm. and we all have different reference points of what that is, yeah. you mm. know. But as I say, for me, like we're saying, like you know, it's an old-fashioned principle. It's just what I've seen. I, I'm and, and I'm totally on board. Like yeah. to so so actually that that was my path. Like with my uh, with my girlfriend, like we actually started with an open relationship, and we went through that. We went through, we weathered the storms of yeah. what that was like mm. until it was like actually this is no longer working for me. Uh, you're and, emotionally uh, invested yeah you but, uh, but uh, yeah and we had that as a discussion yeah and then, then until we were ready to move forward and actually it's something that I learned as a as a cousin it, was, it wasn't you know it wasn't something that was taught to me but it's something that I learned as a as a mode of yeah. like okay let us open like, let us walk into this with that sort of mindset of it was already as a partnership but being free to be open and then stepping forward and then when we were both ready to be together in that way then we did that you know so the it, stages and, yeah. and it actually worked because there is a lot more invested in that way, mm. in such a way that I'm not going to be like, oh, you know what? Actually, would I prefer someone else? Because I've been through so much with that person just to create this <laughs> stability, that trust, mm. that togetherness uh, for both of us to be like, yeah, you know, we can really speak. We can really be free to say what we want and mm. and just know. Because that's where I'm at now. It's like, I don't know what the future is going to be like. You know, for all I know, it could all go to shit. Like, yeah. and, that's, uh, and I'm not saying that to be like cynical but it's just like i'm more in a space of like i know it will be fine but whatever happens between us we'll communicate it in, yeah. a, in a way that was responsible and you know mature like two mature adults yeah and, and it gets more difficult later on if you don't create that dialogue with each other at the beginning yes. you know to re like introduce like that way of talking to each other it's going to be more uncomfortable later on mm. not to like not do it it's just going to be less you know, less resistance to that if you create the framework at the beginning, you yeah. know? Yeah, for mm. excellent communication. Mm. And that open dialogue, you know, open. And I, I always, you know, I know we're really moving away from the topic, but we do that. Not really. Um, <laughs> but actually you can do that. I say to you guys, it's like, you can do this from the first date. You can set your stall out as going, I am an open, I'm an open communicator about who I am mm. and what I'm about. And if you set your, you so know. So refreshing for a woman to hear that. I know. Right? And I, and I, I try. I, people who know me will know. Like we have a friend of ours was on um, uh, a recorded episode of him recently, and he always jokes about when he first met me. Mm. 
I would just, we were traveling and I would talk about sex quite quickly, he said. Yeah. And he used to be like, wow, oh, this guy's really just sexual, man. He's talking about sex. Mm-hmm. But what he saw was that that was just part of who I was. I was just very open about my ideas and thoughts and how I was. Yeah. And he saw how easily it made other people feel comfortable and allowed them to then open up and be themselves. And it's something that, you know, it's like we talked about vulnerability. It's like, mm. it's very being very vulnerable to go, this is who I am. This is all of who I am. But equally, that really creates connection with people it's as well. It's have the conversation you want to have with that person. Mm. Not the bullshit, how's the weather chat. Yeah, how have would the you conversation. Do- yeah. You know you want to talk about sex. Yeah. You know she's dying to feel safe in an environment to talk about sex. Yeah. You know she's a human being. Give her that environment. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Open communication. Mm. Boom. Mm. Uh, I've covered everything I needed to say. Yeah. I'd say the only other thing, kind of, I think the, the dark side of... of of when you start to get really good women, it's kind of serial dating, which we kind of uh, yeah. went on, and where you just kind of, and I see it as this never ending search for something better. Mm. You know, oh, I want someone hotter, or I want someone, um, you know, in some way better. Like, there's than always going to be someone hotter. There's always going to someone be someone that can fuck better. There's always someone that's going to be more appealing because they have more status. You mm. know, there's always going to be someone that has a better lifestyle than you or a job than you, but you know what that's just fucking life just just like appreciate the value and the story you have together yeah you know because that's the beautiful thing yeah. you know like there's always going to be a, some another, someone else yeah. <laughs> it's like a, another version of uh, what you were saying earlier about the nightlife fomo yeah yeah another, mm-hmm. uh, i'm f- <laughs> fear of missing out of experiencing what that woman just like does it really matter? Yeah. And it's yeah. never ending you know and it's mm. like and this it kind of goes back to something you said aj mm. where it's like you have to know why you're in this. What is it you really want? Mm. Like what? Because if you know, okay, what I want is a relationship, you know, I want to get good with women and I want to find an amazing woman, then when you you can find an amazing woman, but you don't have to keep going, ah, oh, but I want one that's slightly more amazing mm. than this one because it is, it's just like a never ending cycle and you could easily be 25 years down the line and go, oh, you know, I'm just looking for a girl that has this other thing that the girl before didn't have. <laughs> and, you know, you've lost all this time just searching when mm. really you could have created something beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We've got, certainly man, got that hot was, in here. That was, uh, I think we've got a lot out there, guys. Some freestyling. There. Freestyle, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to think about a title at the end yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, we've really gone through some amazing, some been great talking to Johnny, some great yeah, conversation thanks, and, Cheers, and really some, uh, yeah, yeah. some thanks. really good content as well. We've gone well. rounds here. We've literally done like, <laughs> literally we've covered so much stuff. <laughs> at one point I looked at the time, I thought it was like, you know, 40 minutes in and mm. it was only like 20 or something. Wow. And it was like, we'd covered like different things. Yeah. So I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, really, really insightful. You've got to pack it all in, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom, 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 I'm, boom. I'm very much like that with my coach. You know, it's just like, I'm just brain dumping. Yeah. Mm. And then it's like, okay, exhausted you now <laughs> now we're going to do the practical yeah you know so anyone that's listening you've got your information go out and do yeah, yeah. yeah that's it and where can people where can people get in contact with you if they're looking for have you got any workshops coming up soon yeah next workshops on 25th of may and nice. um, we typically do one on the last saturday of every month so cool. depending nice. on when you're listening to this um you can find my website is johnnycassell.com the book elite seduction is now on amazon and um, Instagram, I find myself to be most active on there. Yeah. Um, it's at London Dating Coach. So, yeah. Great. Cool. Is yeah, and we've, we've both read through the book. And I'd say, like, I loved, I really loved it. Like, you know, the, Thank you. one of my favorite chapters was the first one, actually, about responsibility mm. and, yeah. and the second about self-coaching because I think these are principles that are just, you can't just take into your dating, dating life and take it into your whole life. 100%. You know? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. I was going to say, Johnny, you want to close us off? Guys, uh, head on over to Authentic Dating Series for probably the best podcast uh, around at the moment. Oh, oh, thank thanks, you. man. What, this episode. <laughs> 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 um, no, Ahmed, David, uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's been a pleasure to yeah, be welcomed into your uh, studio. Mm, <laughs> studio home. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Cool, cool man. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, listeners. Uh, Yeah, you can catch us at Authentic Dating Series on Instagram and and all good places like that. Yeah. Cool, Cool. guys. Thanks very much. Ciao. Ciao.